Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Another beautiful sunrise on the back bays of New Jersey. Regrettably, this is the final bow shot of the 2021 season for my little angler and my Minn Kota. Hauling out after a few casts along the sod banks, getting the Suzuki pampered over at Chestnut Neck Marina in port. Went to bed for the winter. Sad, yes, but it just leaves me focusing on the surf action, which I hope catches fire one of these mornings very soon. I'm Jim Hutchinson with a New Jersey Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine. The sun starting to set farther to the south, leaving these long shadows along the beach, but still the hot and heavy surf bite at the Jersey Shore still has not yet materialized. Uh, true, late October into early November uh, is more of a pick with more quality fish, bigger fish, less quantity. I just happen to be looking for a little bit of quantity along this particular stretch. I'm here at the Bayhead Point Pleasant border for the most part, looking off to the north, which is where some of our big fish are coming in, right? I know you guys in Atlantic and Cape May County are hoping that to be the case. I think most of the fleet here is working at Manasquan Reef, but there are some inshore boats working, have these offshore winds today, so I'm sure the bunker schools are there. But still, all in all, uh, there have been some impressive surf caught fish, especially along this Ocean County, Central Jersey stretch. Edvardos Durandavis from Ocean Gate, he let me know he was out Saturday morning. He caught this one in the seaside surf on an Ava diamond jig, 20 pound braid, Lamy rod, tsunami reel for those of you keeping score at home. This was the second cast after sunrise for a 45 inch catch and release fish. So that's a good sign. Not the only good fish along this central Jersey coast either. Um, a lot along the Ocean County stretch, at least I heard from Pete at Charlie's Bait and Tackle last week. Uh, he's out on Route 35. Well, Matty Jordan stopped by, Marty Jordan. He was tossing an SP minnow with a homemade teaser. Uh, that was along the Ocean Beach stretch last week. So there's a couple of good fish in the mix. Now I've not seen personally any sign here in the wash as far as sand eels uh, just yet. No birds wheeling, nothing washing up, uh, but there's still plenty of bait in the back bays, that's for sure. Um, you would expect at some point to see a push of the spearing and peanut bunker out of these inlets anytime soon. I'm standing here just on the outgoing tide. You would expect this time of year with this northwest wind blowing that at some point uh, a wave of peanuts will come through. Waves or even all, in all at once. Um, then it's just a matter of being in the right place at the right time. Now along this stretch here in Ocean County last week, Robert Fort let me know that he had a great morning blitz with some buddies uh, on peanuts. Eight casters, each with a personal best in the sud. Again, right place at the right time. I might be in the wrong place four days out of the week, uh, but it's better than being at home waiting for day five report to react. Always be ready to go, but you got to put your time in. Again, good action out bass, uh, out bass, bat, back. I say bass because um, there's been plenty of good bass out back. Uh, if you're more of a night shifter as opposed to dawn and dusk patrol, there are some good fish along our western shores, just on the back of the barrier islands. Dante Castagliola said a certain artificial waterway constructed to allow passage of boats from one waterway to another, that's been on fire with fish to 49 inches. And again, where I'm standing, hopefully some of that bait starts pouring out of the back and some of those big fish as well start coming out with it and a down along the beach. And again, we're still waiting for some big waves of good fish to come in from the offshore grounds and also from along the south shore of Long Island from the northeast. But again, quantity and hopefully quality will arrive in time for Thanksgiving. Just remember to match the hatch. Now, in terms of what's in store for Atlantic um, and, and Cape May counties, as well as Delaware surf casters, look no farther than the Monmouth County shoreline, where the Buffalo Stampede can, continues uh, to race through, and it brings us our lead image of the week. It's courtesy of Chuck Manny, again, a 51 pounder for Cesar Carranza. That there is an eel caught fish. 
and that is along the inshore grounds. You can see some of the boats working along the inshore grounds. It's only a matter of time before some of these big fish turn inwards along the beach for surf casters. But spoons and mojos at the rocks and off of Sandy Hook, also inside Raritan Bay in the channels will produce a few of those catch and release giants. And they're not all overs either. Uh, a mix of slot fish in the mix. Young Harvey Held, for example, uh, he was off of Sandy Hook with Dad Aaron from uh, Octopus Yachts there in Belmar for a nice 32 inch dinner table fish. Uh, other young guns getting her done in the North Jersey stretch include seven year old Travis Jeske with a 20 inch striper that he caught on Bloodworm. And Dad Joe said he's had some luck up, up north a jig in the uh, Ava jigs as well. So at some point pretty soon, the Ava jigs are gonna take over, take control. Plenty of adult bunker uh, in the mix, those peanuts, but eventually we'll get those sand eels in the mix as well. The party boat fleet, when not into the sea bass, or gearing up for that November 16th tog increase uh, to five fish, I know I said four fish last week, five tog as of November 16th, but some of these party boats are also putting their patrons into some jigging on the striped bass as well. As a matter of fact, Greg Hewitt and crew of the big Mohawk out of Belmar, all those boats continue to sail. It's just a matter of what's in the mix at that point, sea bass, tow tog, or the striped bass. And we still are waiting for perhaps a, a little burst of bluefish in the mix. I know the folks that are fishing in the LBI Surf Fishing Classic, where a couple of stripers have been weighed in, they're still waiting for some good sized bluefish because there's a lot of money to be made in that tournament, which runs through December. Now, last week, I had mentioned some big squid up there in Shark River. Um, well, they popped up to the south this week. The crew at Avalon Hodgepodge reported this week, earlier this week, that some big squid are in the back bay. They said all over. That was on Tuesday. Sure, you could squid jig them if you're looking for some bait, if you're looking for some fresh calamari, uh, but also it's something to keep in mind with all that bait. We've talked peanut bunker and the future of sand eels and of course the adult bunker in the mix, but if squid are around, that's more striper food and there's plenty of food in the mix for when these stripers do arrive. I see fish breaking just to my south. We're gonna see how quickly I can do this video forecast. There are plenty of stripers out back, especially if you're into Atlantic and Cape May County. I mentioned pulling my boat on Monday. Well, apparently I cruised over the fish on my way up to Mullica. Steve Urbano said he stumbled upon a nice little bass blitz on Monday, right there at the mouth of the uh, Mullica where it connects with Great Bay, a dozen stripers to 31 inches before they skedaddled. Then he skedaddled and went offshore and looked for tog. Again, right place, right time. God, I'm looking at this. This looks like the right place and the right time right now. Captain David at Seacon Bay Sportsman is putting his customers into the mix of fish in the back bays along those sedges and sod banks. He was out Wednesday morning. Uh, he's been drifting a live spot quite a bit, uh, but also throwing some jig heads with gulp on the end. Uh, I'd recommend also trying to throw some of those uh, smaller top waters, the poppers, the Stillwater, Stillwater Smack at Juniors, for example, along those sedges and sod banks. Also, if you're coming across marks, like Steve had mentioned before, you don't have to see them on top, but if you're making some of those marks, get a bucktail or jig down deep in those channels. Live eels as well, which is how Captain Mike here put this two, uh, 12 pounder on the scale over there at Fanatics in Ocean City. Uh, he was taking advantage of some beautiful weather and that influx of back bay stripers earlier this week. Again, that was live eel. You can get them while you're walking the sedges too, but occasionally you might have to put in some non human hours. That's according to Jose Lopez, said he and his father in law. They were working the sod banks in Brigantine over the weekend, 12 30 a.m. to 4 a.m. Somebody's got to sleep and somebody's got to catch fish. But I'll tell you, Jose and his father-in-law lost count after 20 fish. What he told me, he was throwing mag darters, SP minnows, Rapala super shad, Sabeel magic swimmers. He said they hit everything in the bag. Apparently, I need a new bag. Not just Atlantic or Cape May County either, but also in Ocean County, in the back, in the lagoons, in the rivers. I uh, heard from Ken Seafelt said it was the Forkard River that produced again for he and his wife Val with this 27 incher. He was throwing a fishaholic shad. Quick summary then. Big striped bass continue to come down from the northern country. Monmouth County, some big fish up to 50 pounds to the 50 pound range. I'm sure a bunch of them are gonna stay offshore as they make this, uh, this venture to the south. We know that the guys in Atlanta County, Cape May County always talk about that. They seem to hit Barnegat Inlet and go southeast, but we do have enough bait inshore that it makes things interesting and it could explode at any point. Today, tomorrow, right now in front of me, who knows? And there's good sized striped bass in the back bays as well. 
uh, from here in Point, Manasquan, Upper Barnegat Bay, all the way down into Ludlam and those bays in Cape May County as well. Coming days, expect more action out front though, especially as we get some more of these offshore winds pushing the bait out, bringing some of the bait in tight as it's moving down the beach. Uh, they'll nose up against the wind and hopefully some of those bass are in there as well. Black sea bass still in play on those wrecks and reef sites here at the Jersey Shore. Uh, and starting Tuesday the 16th, like I said, uh, you could expect the rail gang to be fishing those slack lines again as we bump up the tog limits to five fish in the Garden State. Congratulations, by the way, to Paul Newman. No, not that Paul Newman, this Paul Newman. He works up there at Tackle World. He joined Tails, uh, Tall Tail Charters up in Rhode Island recently, broke that state's 67-year blackfish record with a 21.57 pounder. Congratulations, Paul. That's Jersey pride for you right there. Just a reminder to all my salty friends, New Jersey does an incredible job stocking rainbow trout in these ponds and lakes and streams, many of them put and take. Um, as far as getting out, if for example, the weather turns sour, you can always head into some of these fresh stocked uh, impoundments, the lakes, the streams, catch yourself up some rainbow trout and smoke them up on the grill if you get them. Speaking of weather, we'll take a look at the marine forecast for the weekend, but let's spend two minutes first out west in the Poconos for your Poconos outdoor report with my man, George Shower. Well, hey, thanks, Jim. You know, it looks like we're in for some decent weather this weekend. We got a little bit of rain to work through on Friday, but this weather is turning a little bit more seasonal. Great time to get out and weather line. And what a time it is. You know, we've had a couple of guys check in this week. Uh, everybody kind of checking in with the same strategy. I don't know if it was just coincidence or everybody's picking up on what's working. But what's happening this week is that jerk baits are just dominating pretty much everything. I got a couple examples for you. We're checking in with that uh, Ryan Swoop. Ryan was over on the Susquehanna River, uh, catching some smallmouth, and he was over by the Judiata, and he said the water temp was down to 46 degrees. Now, we haven't seen that here at Beltsville. It's in the high, high uh, 50s right now, but 46 degrees on the Susquehanna, and using those jerk baits, and he was getting a whole mess of uh, really nice smallmouth, not just smallmouth. They were in a two, three and a half pound range, so grab some jerk baits, head to the Susquehanna, and get yourself some of those big old chunky smallies. Now, also in the jerk bake action, we had Josh Taylor. You know, we touched in with Josh last week and he was getting a bunch of walleye on those X wraps. Well, he was back at it again this week and got four or five of them. Again, uh, jerking those X wraps right in shallow water, right at the edge of deep water. And he was producing really good. He said it's been a real consistent bite. Josh, I just wish you'd save a few for the rest of us, but great work there, buddy. Now, continuing on, more jerk bait action. I want to tie in with them. Rich Bates. Now, Rich was up on Wall and Palm Pack, uh, and he was using the jerk bait as well, and he was getting himself some small mouse and walleye. But check this out. He got his new PB Northern Pike on a jerk bait, too. He's throwing a husky jerk. Uh, it was a 36 incher. Um, and again, congrats. That was a great way to do it. Again, jerk baits up in that water. One more to share with you guys uh, Eric Goodstall, normally our trout guru guy, put his flower rod away and picked up the, the spinning reel with the jerk bait and started getting in some nice largemouth. That's right. It's a great time of year for the largies, too. Don't, don't put them aside just because the water temperature goes down a little bit. But yeah, uh, again, jerk baits for, for largemouth, smallmouth, northern pike, pretty much anything you want to get your hands on right now. I suggest you go grab a handful of jerk baits. Go get out and get on them. From Pennsylvania, I'm George, your Pocono Outdoors guy. The midweek NOAA forecast for inshore waters out of Atlantic City shows a strong likelihood that I'll be spending all day Friday at my desk. Somebody's got to work. After that, I can't make any promises, not to the household chores, not to my deadlines at the Fisherman Magazine, because it's starting to look good. I've said all along, we need a strong dose, in my opinion, of some west-northwest winds to get those fish on the move. That looks like it's in our forecast, and it could be the start of something wonderful. Finally, here for Surfcasters at the Jersey Shore, and I know you're looking forward to it too. The Delaware Surfcasters are chomping at the bit, just as we are, all along the Jersey coast. Like rocker Tom Petty once said, the waiting is the hardest part. I'll see you on the beach this weekend. Save a fish or two for me, if you could. My text is always around if you're on fish. Catch them up. We'll see you again next week, right here at thefisherman.com.
Steigercraft boats, built by people who fish our waters. Serious anglers choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.